Seven is the most common answer for someone's lucky number. Well, today there's a lucky six who have secured that trip to Clash Royale League World Finals to join everybody, the big boys in Helsinki, Finland, for a shot at glory and the biggest piece of that million-dollar prize pool. Hello and welcome back to Three Crowns, your bi-weekly home for Clash Royale esports news and beyond. I'm Rich Slayton, that's Andrew Guy, and we are here to bring you all the most important stuff. And of course, rounding out the squad today is two-time regional Clash Royale Royale League champion, Joshua A.C. Sharon. Andrew, community events are over. We're getting ready for the big show. What are we doing today? That's right. All the golden tickets have been given away. Well, kind of. We have our summer qualifier, which we'll be talking about for you guys a little bit later. But yes, Rich is going to break down all six of our golden ticket winners for you guys, beat by beat. And then and I'm going to let you guys know how that final golden ticket was claimed as we cover Royale Masters and that grand finals that just happened. And of course, balance changes are in. That's right. We're coming to a new meta. So AC, probably the most qualified of all of us, is going to give you guys three new decks that he thinks is going to dominate in our brand new meta but first the six golden ticket finalists rich let's go Thanks, Andrew. The community event portion of our tournament is almost done, and we do, of course, have five of those winners kicking things off the reign of terror, the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back of the Pharaoh himself, Mohammed Light, taking down the Queso Cup Gold Edition, the Masters Challenge, and the ESL Snapdragon Pro Series for Europe, Middle East, and North Africa. Of course, he can only get one golden ticket, so the runners-up in both of those, Mugi, the defending world champion, and Aslan out of Turkey, also got golden tickets from those as well. Finally, we got to the Copa All-Stars for North America and Latin America, and it was the young rookie Arden Toas coming through hot, getting the win, that big golden ticket trip to Clash Royale League World Finals. And of course, there was still one more golden ticket left. For more on the Royale Masters, let's go to Andrew Guy. Thanks a lot, Rich. The Royale Masters Gold Edition has finally come to an end. After five weeks of grueling competition, we were left with just eight players. That's right, four from qualification points and four from our wild card open. But it was really all about Lucas and Moogie. Both Lucas and Moogie started their days off with a game loss early on, but after that first game loss, they were perfect throughout the day, running through Furkan and, of course, Titone, respectively. After that, they were up against Garico and Wallace, where they both went 2 and oh, They would only find one game loss on day one, although Lucas did definitely cut it close. He had a 61 HP finish against Furkan, you can see right here, and, of course, even closer against Garico with just two HP remaining. And then for our defending world champion in Mugi, he put on a clinic with Royal Giant picking apart his opponent's defenses time and time again. And then we move on to day number two. You heard me talk about Greco just a little bit earlier. He was sent down and had to face off against Pandora and then Furkan, where he went six and two in games. And then it was back to Lucas after Lucas fell to Mugi in our upper bracket two to one. Lucas and Greco in a lower bracket bracket finals that would actually determine who would be taking home our golden ticket and it was all about the Brazilian in Lucas he's battled so hard all year long and he ended up taking down Greco three to one but there was still a lot of money on the line Lucas moves back up to the upper bracket but he could not stop the machine that is Mugi our defending world champion graciously gives a golden ticket to Lucas, who will be there at our World Finals as well. And for Greco, our third place finisher, he's going to have to join in on that 20-win challenge starting this week. And I'm going to break that down for you right now. The Clash Royale League qualifier is underway. The one-month-long six-stage event to get our final 10 gold ticket holders. We'll start with, of course, the 20-win challenge. The 20-win challenge will take place between August 6th and August 11th. Then stage two will be a private ladder system, the 15th through the 20th. Now, the first two stages will not be on broadcast, but three through six will be with you there the whole way. Stage three is double elimination bracket on August 27th. Then then stage four, the triple elimination on September 3rd. Finally, it's another triple elimination on September 10th. And your last chance is, of course, the LCQ, the last chance qualifier on September 11th. So get to practicing. That 20 win challenge is not easy. Trust me. 
I try every single year, but maybe the new meta will help me out. AC, break down these balance changes and the three best decks to move forward for me to get that 21 badge. Thank you, Andrew. It's officially official. Clash Royale is turning 38 seasons old. How the time flies, it, it, it's crazy. It still feels like season five for me, uh, but that's right. We're heading into the August monthly changes. For the August monthly change, we do have a rework to the Elixir Golem. Instead of it being 004, it's gonna be a 112. So the first blob, it's gonna have an upgraded HP by 9%, but it's also going to give one Elixir to your opponent. Stage two, six HP extra, but also one Elixir to your opponent when that dies out. And then stage three, no HP increase, but also you're getting 0.5 Elixir per little blob. On the other side, we do have the buffs. The Prince and the Ram Rider are both getting charge increases. So instead of it needing 3.5 tiles in order for it to get the charge, it now only needs 3.0. I don't know how that's gonna change the meta with the Prince, but I think the Ram Rider is really going to love that difference in, in, in charge speed. The Mega Knight, we all know how scary the Mega Knight is. The jump delay, instead of it being 1.1 seconds, it's now only gonna be 0.9 seconds. So it's gonna be jumping all across the map. You are gonna really need to focus on your tile placements and just you know getting those tanks down that can take out the Mega Knight. The Ice Golem, it's going to have a increased slow effect. So that is going to be really special. It's going to allow all these troops to clump together. Instead of it being one second like it was previously, it's now gonna be 1.5. The Executioner, instead of it only being able to reach 6.5 tiles, it is now going to reach 7.5 tiles. So it is gonna be able to throw that, you know, throw that ax all across the map. And I'm gonna really love to see the potential with that. You know, a lot of the times with like a Lava Loon push, you're not really gonna need that increased ax range. So I'm gonna, I, I'm really gonna love to see what happens with the other kind of pushes. And so I think there's a lot of potential for, you know, big giant pushes or big golem pushes to be devastated by the Executioner. And so I really like that buff. With the nurse, we now have the Golden Knight. So the Golden Knight is going to lose 10% of its HP. I really like that. I think it was, I think it was the strongest card on the game. And so I think that's going to bring it down a notch. And I think that's really healthy for the game. Unfortunately, the little blobs are gonna lose 9% of their damage. So instead of 500 HP on the tower, it's only gonna do 475 HP to the tower. So it's still going to be strong, but not as strong as before. The pushback to the fireball, instead of it being 1.8, it is now 1.0. So you can't just fireball one card, move three tiles to the left. I mean, I guess 1.8 tiles, but now it's only gonna be shifted a little bit. And so I think there's a lot of potential for Balloon to maybe come back into the meta. The reflection tower damage is going to see a, a fairly large reduction in tower damage by 33% health. We're no longer gonna see 5% Electro Giants taking out entire towers. Now it's gonna need to be 8%. And then the Skeleton King, instead of it being 18 skeletons spawned when it reaches its maximum capacity, it's now only gonna be 16. What's gonna actually happen in the meta? I don't think the Elixir Golem is gonna change that much. I think the Prince is gonna have potential, but I don't really see it changing all that much. The two cards that I really wanna focus on with the buffs are gonna be the Ram Rider and Mega Knight. I think both of those are gonna see a huge uptick in usage and a huge uptick in games won. I think Ram Rider now is a standalone win condition. It doesn't need, you know, these huge 16 elixir pushes with lightning and all sorts of helps. I really think that, you know, you could potentially just use it at its win condition. Once you get to five elixir, let's just throw it on the map. The Mega Knight, we all know how scary it is. I, I don't need to talk about it. I don't even know if it needed this buff. I, I like that it's gotten the buff. Everybody struggles with it in, in these lower ladder. And when I say lower ladder, I mean sub 7K. Only the 7K players know how to defend it properly. So that's gonna be really scary to see how that develops in this meta. And I'm really excited for that. For the nerfs, I don't think anything's gonna change with the Golden Knight. I don't think anything's gonna change with the Skeleton King. I think those are gonna still be very, very strong. And overall, I think we, we've taken a great look at some of the strongest cards and, and, and kind of dialed them back a bit. And then for the buffs, I love the buffs. I think Ram Rider is gonna be so cool to see in the meta. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens to the meta overall. That's gonna be enough for the August monthly changes. I'm giving it back to you, Rich and Andrew. Thanks, Josh, for coming in hot with those deck recommendations. Andrew, big, big balance update. I know some of that stuff might get into, into your decks here. What's, uh... what's got your goat right now? 
Well, right now, I'm, all I'm thinking about is how much more Elixir Golem I'm going to run into, even though, even if it's better or worse, people are just going to try it out again, and I hate playing against Elixir Golem. And the other part of it is Fireball. I need that Fireball to blow up those blobs and knock back the support troops. So I, right now, I'm just feeling a little, uh, <sighs> you know. You need a hug? A little bit of a, a, little bit of a something at the moment? <laughs> Please. Well, you know Please. what? The, the most cuddly character in the whole game, my personal favorite, got a buff. Ice Golem can come give you a nice big frozen hug. He, that little extra slow, uh, that's going to be so cool. If, if Everyone knows Ice Golem is my absolute favorite, so happy to see him get a little bit yep. of love finally. Uh, Andrew, speaking of love, what do you love telling our viewers every single time at the end of this show? You gotta subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. We've already gone through all six of our golden tickets. You do not want to miss these qualifiers for Clash Royale League. So go follow Esports Royale EN on Twitter. Check out esports.clashroyale.com. And again, subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. And hey, give Rich a follow. Give me a follow. Go check out Rich's channel. He streams so much good content on his YouTube. He's got almost 100,000 followers. Go do all those things right meow. Right meow.